Welcome to the review of Black Monday. Black Monday is a simulation game about the stock market in the United States. It was developed by Starsoft Development Laboratories and the publisher was Key Punch Software. The game was designed by Scott Adams, the same creator of the Dilbert comics. I'm reviewing the PC version which utilizes CGA graphics and I'll first start with just a single player. You enter the player's name and they're presented with the main screen. The left column is the company name. The second column called last is how much the share was worth last turn. And then cur is the current turn. And then change also shows you a friendly modification of the price going up or down. The initial price of the companies is randomly determined when the game begins. So each time you play, each company will be different, which gives a little bit of replayability. You can see toward the bottom that there's certain characters that are lighter in color, like the S and sell, the B and buy. Those are the hotkeys for the various menu actions you can perform. Here we're going to be purchasing some stocks of the Ford Motor Company. It is a little strange that you don't put the number of shares you want to buy. You type in the amount of money you want to spend. I'm not sure if the intention was to be an educational game or just to have fun. But you can also press 1 just to spend all your money and buy as many shares as you can. So after making a purchase, it shows you on the right side the cost of the stocks and how many shares you have. Once you're ready, you hit end, and that stops that given day. Then we're presented with a cute little graphic here of a stock ticker toward the bottom, displaying the New York Stock Exchange. And then the first message that appears is an event that occurs. Here the stock market crashed and all stocks are down. This is Black Monday after all. So as you can see in the change column there, it's a red colored and they're all negative values. You can also see Western Union and Lockheed are bankrupt now. If we look at our shares, it shows we have $39,672 now, even though we invested 50000 which is what you start with incidentally. If you try to buy some bankrupt company shares, it won't let you. Even though the game was released in 1987, there is no support for a mouse. It's all keyboard driven. There's a total of 10 turns that each player will take before the game ends. Each time they're presented with those cute little graphics of New York and then once again shows the New York Stock Exchange with the latest event and adjustment on prices. I did notice that when it mentioned certain company stocks going up or down, those that were excluded still may go up or down. Usually the messages that appeared there are just relevant based on the type of event that occurred. Companies that are doing well may also give out dividends, which is indicated here on the stock ticker. Even though the game is very simplistic, it does have the ability for you to go to the bank, which is interesting. The interest rate is randomly determined at the start of each turn. Here the present rate is 4.6%. You get a cute little graphic of speaking with the teller, who actually looks like he's in jail, and you say, how much money you want to borrow? Shows you a little balance sheet there. And that'll come into play later on when we show how to pay back loans. You can see a nice little graphic of the various assets you have. It also shows you your bank balance that's due. And there is interest charged each turn. There's also a graph section which updates a line graph based on what turn you're currently on for each stock. So you can see the stock going up or down, how much it went up or down. But as you can see here, the interest rate has already gone up to 5.8%. So 
So the ultimate goal to win the game is to just make as much money as you can. So of course you want to buy low and sell high. So after selling all of our Ford shares, we have enough money to pay back our debt to the bank. It's handy that it shows you your ending balance after interest, so you don't have to do the calculation yourself. So you'll be spending a lot of time going back into your assets after making sales to see how much money you actually do have now. So here we've gone from 50000 to 61000 Not too shabby. As I mentioned earlier, there are dividends that are sometimes paid out based on how well companies are doing. Sometimes you may only have one dividend appear on the stock ticker, and other times I've seen three or four. I did notice an unusual spelling, which is very consistent in the game. Here it says General Mills increases their production by 25 per space cent. I did not realize that you could spell percent with a space. So actually I did learn something in this game. It is possible to run out of cash completely. For example, if you had all your money invested in companies that go bankrupt. But what you can do is go back to the bank and borrow even if you have no money. And the amount of money that the bank allows you to borrow is through the roof. Some companies will go through a stock split once their stock price reaches 140. It's a hard set value. As I mentioned, if a company goes bankrupt, you will lose all your shares, just like in the real world. It seems like the ratio of bad effects to good effects is about equal, but when the bad effects hit, they seem much worse. Oftentimes it can cause almost all the stocks to go down. Sometimes it is set on a given industry. A lot of times the messages are referring to either some governmental agency or something happening in the industry. Sometimes it even refers to stock market analysts, and that affects the stock market. Strangely enough, the bankrupt companies can still have their stocks go down. At least it says so on the stock ticker. If we look at the charts, it will also demonstrate bankruptcies. You'll see it bottom out. But interestingly enough, some of the companies can actually come back on the stock market and you can start purchasing their stocks again. You do not get back the stock that was lost though if it was invested when the bankruptcy occurred. Here's another event saying how Japan imports of steels are down by 10%. So this is actually good news for American steel workers. So anything related to the steel industry goes up. Sometimes there's specific events for only a single company in this case, Alcoa unveils plans to build two new $25 million plants to handle increased production. <laughs> I read it like that on purpose, because that's what you're going to be doing throughout the game. Reading very slowly. After 10 turns, the game is over. You're presented with a cute little graphic. And it says Black Monday, the game. I guess it was important to put in there that it was the game. So it says how much you finished with. And then it gives you a comment. Most often snarky. Here it says maybe if you practiced, you could do better. Gee, thanks. You can tell Scott Adams was the designer based on the comments made during the game. Here it shows we're the winner. Are you good enough to be one of the top 12 players? Well, sure, because there's nobody else scored yet. Do you want to play again? If you hit no, you drop straight to the command prompt. Incidentally, that's the only way to exit this game. You cannot exit the game with a control C, control break. You either have to complete the game or 
Control Delete. Here we can play the game with a negative value. And it says, remind me never to let you invest my money. You're bankrupt. The funny thing is, it still says we're the winner. Winner with negative $3,828, yay. But we don't even get to make it on the top 12 scoreboard because it sets at zero. Some of the events also have some pretty funny verbiage. Here it says, Hurricane Dorothy hits the East Coast with 150 mile per hour winds. She's vicious. At any time during the game, you can see the top 12 list here with a nice background of the Statue of Liberty. But the real fun of this game is playing hot seat multiplayer. Here we're going to put in six players. Of course, D Forte. And then some cameo appearances by some of my top patrons who have supported me for a long time now, which I appreciate tremendously. Magnificent meal. We'll start with you. Wait a minute, you jump from player two to four. Hmm, Frank Schwip. Now it jumped from player four to six. Symbionts. Okay, what happened here? Well, basically, the game had a buffer overflow. And as you can see in the bottom right corner, the person's name was N.T. Meal. And here's Frank Schwipp. It cut off the last part of his name. So now it's I.P.P.E. for the second player name. So yeah, I fell across a bug in the game. There is a character limit, even though it doesn't tell you that. And it just creates extra players based on the overflows. So I just buy a single stock for each of the players here. And we're going to randomly go through and see how the game does. Just to show you how much randomness there is. It is nice that you can check the analysis screen for each player when it's their turn. So that way they can make their decisions and decide what they want to buy or sell and how they're doing compared to the rest of the players. Because remember, this was before the internet. This was in the BBS days. Even though this isn't a BBS game, a lot of games back then had hot seat multiplayer. So as each player ends their turn, it cycles through and the next time the turn order changes to try to make it a little more fair. The reason for this is because you can influence the stock price on individual companies by buying out all the company's shares. So as I let the stock ticker roll here to show who of my mentioned patrons wins the game here, what did I think of this game? Well, it was fun as a simple little novelty type game. You'd probably play it for maybe a week or two back in the day if you're playing single player. If there's multiplayer, you might actually have a pretty good time with it. Of course, it could be frustrating because the events that happen have nothing to do with previous events. They're completely random. So you could be completely screwed, but the other players are in the same boat. So you can take risks with penny type stocks and the payoffs could be big. In fact, the instructions built into the game does give you some advice on things you could try or do. So overall, it was a snarky little game. I did enjoy the humor and the cute little simplistic graphics. Whoa, Frank. You just retired rich there. It says, enough said. This is definitely a great score. You should play in the big game. Incidentally, for those that don't know, the term Black Monday is referring to October 19th, 1987. And that's when the Dow Jones Industrial Average dropped about 22% in a single day. So the fact that the game is named after this lets you know what kind of events you can basically expect during the game. I did notice some of the random events repeated as I played multiple times. 
So there's a good variety, but they will repeat eventually. So I hope you enjoyed this review of Black Monday, and I'll see you next time.